The outflow tracks are easy. All they are are two tubes coming out of each ventricle. There's the aorta comes out of the left ventricle and the pulmonary comes out of the right ventricle. And once you get them into your mind, you'll find them easier to scan than the four chamber view. I'm now going to illustrate this with a rather crude, but I've found effective way of just demonstrating how simple the outflow tracks and ductal and aortic arteries are. A brief recap, left ventricle, right ventricle, moderator band, tricuspid, medial valve inserts more apically than the medial cusp of the mitral valve, atrioventricular septum, base of intraatrial septum, foramen ovale, and this represents the little flicker, the little flicker of the septum secundum you see as a result of right to left flow through the foramen ovale. So the aortic arch arises just above the atrioventricular septum, as we'll demonstrate here. So the aorta is a tube that comes out of the left ventricle just above the atrioventricular septum. It comes out horizontally at first across the chest towards the right side of the chest, turns the corner and then starts to go down having given off the head and neck vessels and ends up going down the descending aorta down here. The pulmonary outflow comes off the right ventricle, and as we demonstrated, runs more or less straight back towards the descending aorta down here. As it does so, it gives off the right branch of pulmonary round there, and it, which curls its way round the ascending aorta, and the left branch of pulmonary comes off here into the left lung field. So you end up with aorta going up, over and down, pulmonary coming more or less straight back, right branch branching round the ascending aorta, left branch going off into the left lung field, then both heading up, going down to the same place down here where the descending aorta goes. When you move up from the four chamber view, again remember it's only just a tiny movement of the probe, a couple of degrees, you sneak up from the aortic outflow and then you kind of find the reason, if you like, for the atrioventricular septum. The aortic outflow appears just above the atrioventricular septum. When the baby's in this position, you'll get a pretty good view of the aortic outflow because it's running perpendicular, more or less from left to right across the chest. So obviously you think of the aorta as a left ventricular structure, but it rapidly goes from the left side of the baby across to the right side of the baby. And when the baby's in this position, or when you're scanning with the baby in this position, you'll see the aorta pretty clearly as a long structure because there's something for the scan beams to bounce off. Aortic valve running into the aortic outflow. When you move up the aorta, you'll see that it very rapidly, as we saw in the early illustration, it very rapidly turns the corner and starts to come up towards the fetal head. Therefore, what was a structure looking like a tube now becomes a circular structure as it becomes cut in cross-section. So in this case, we can see that the spine is down on the bottom left of the screen, which means that the baby's head is into the screen. The left side of the baby is on the right side of the image, the right side of the baby is on the left side of the image, and the aorta in the centre here can be seen having turned the corner and start to go up towards the head. In this view, there are effectively five chambers, which is why it sometimes gets called the five chamber view. You see the right ventricle, the left ventricle, the right atrium, the left atrium, and the aorta.
moving up from the aortic outflow, as you've, once you've seen the aorta go into cross-section and become circular, heading up towards the baby's head, just a fractional movement and you'll see the pulmonary valve and pulmonary outflow running into the ductal arch. And it's very difficult to talk about and show the pulmonary outflow without also seeing the ductal arch because they're in the same transverse scan plane. The difficulty that you'll have with demonstrating the ductal outflow, having seen the aortic outflow, is that the kind of position that you'll get a good aortic outflow will be a kind of position where you won't get a very good view of the pulmonary outflow because they run more or less perpendicular to each other. Looking at the image here with the model, the baby's spine is on the right of the screen, the left side of the baby is down and the right side of the baby is up, so the baby's head's out towards us with the feet into the screen. And in this view, you'll get really good views of the pulmonary outflow. The right coming down the pulmonary outflow, when it's more or less alongside the, the ascending aorta, the right branch comes off. But in this view, it'll be heading up towards us and won't be well shown. The left branch tends to disappear down into the lung and head slightly more inferiorly, and so it's slightly more difficult to see. As soon as the branches come off, this is the ductus arteriosus heading down towards the descending aorta. If you pick up this slice and just look at the relationship of the aortic and pulmonary valves, you can see just how close they are to each other. The aorta running more or less horizontally across the chest towards the right side, the pulmonary outflow running more or less straight from front to back and running in straight into the ductus arteriosus. pulmonary valve running into pulmonary outflow and then on into the ductus arteriosus. Ascending aorta, superior vena cava. When the baby's lying on its back like this, the aortic outflow will be easy to see, but the pulmonary outflow and the duct will be difficult because they're running in the same direction as the scan beams. However, this will allow the right branch of the pulmonary to be seen much more clearly. So you need to move your probe around the patient to orientate onto the baby to try and demonstrate the right branch. And in this situation, it shows up very clearly, partly because it's perpendicular and partly because it's on the other side of the ascending aorta, which means there's a, ch a rapid change in densities which allow for the walls of the right branch to look quite marked and obvious on the scan. In fact, sometimes it can look almost as bright and as large as the aorta in this view. Pulmonary valve ductus arteriosus, right branch of pulmonary. Again, moving a fraction up towards the baby's head, you then start to see the aortic arch. In the previous section, we saw the ductal arch run straight back into the descending aorta. Moving fractionally up, you still see the, the ductal arch, but as you come above the point where the right branch branches off, you then start to see the aortic arch come over the top of the right branch and head to exactly the same place that the ductal arch is. In other words, heading down into the descending aorta. 
Alongside the aortic arch, which is of course now on the right side of the baby, you see the superior vena cava. In the view shown, the baby's lying on its back with the left side on the left, the right side on the right, so the head is out towards us and the feet are into the screen. In this view, it would be quite tricky to see the arches using 2D imaging because they're both running away from us. But you can see the ductal arch here, the aortic arch which has come over the top of the right branch, with the right branch appearing out here, and the superior vena cava here. Pulmonary outflow running into ductal arch, aortic arch.